Santo. Hey guys, you have the team here. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Danganronpa. In the last episode, we found a corpse in the garden. And it turns out this corpse may possibly belong to Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student who Kyoko told us about. The ultimate despair. So let's check out the corpse again, now that it's exploded thanks to Fukawa. I should check the body out one more time. Careful, Nagi. Don't forget, she's a girl. N no worries. It's not like I'm capable of making much contact. In that regard, I'm definitely not like Kirigiri. Well, first of all, what's this over by your side? There's something on the ground next to the body. It looks like a key. Maybe this is the key Kirigiri stole. No, it's not. Had a Monokuma head. Oh yeah, the key, the key Kirigiri stole from Monokuma had a Monokuma head on the end. Nothing like this one. Then, what's this key? What is it? Did you find something? Y yeah, I found this next to the body. I've never seen a key like this before. Just what does it open? You don't know either, Togami? Nagi, allow me to bestow upon you a magnificent responsibility. What? The that key most likely gives us access to some area that's been sealed off until now. And you want me to find out what it opens? It could be the bio lab, the headmaster's office, the data processing room, or the dormitory's second floor. I'm counting on you. In short, I'm the errand boy. Anyway, there's only one place that this opens. And in case you can't tell by the design on the handle of the key, it is the uh, data processing room on the fourth floor. So let's just go back out. I mean down. Or whatever. Shut up. So let's go over to the data processing room. As I recall, the door to the data processing room is supposed to be locked. Alright, let's give this a shot. I entered the key I found in the garden into the keyhole, and... It opened? That means this key... This is the key to the data processing room. It's the key to the data processing room! I tried saying is this saying it a second time to prolong the feeling of success, but my attempt was futile. Anyway, I've got to tell everyone about this. And so I ran back to the garden. You're back. What did you, you're back. What did you find? The key, the, the key opens the door to the data processing room on the fourth floor. Can we get into the data processing room now? I see. So that's what it was for. Though that begs the question, why did that corpse have the key to the data processing room? It looks like we need to go to the data processing room and see what secrets are buried there. Yeah, you're right. Well, here we are. The door's already unlocked. When we got open, when we open it, it's not gonna go kaboom like the body, is it? Don't jinx us, dude. There's nothing to worry about. We have Nagi. What? Do the honors. Again? It means I trust you. He's gotta be lying. I'm just being used, that's all. Alright, you... Oh, at least Togami's standing nice and close. Then when I put my hand on the door, I unconsciously shut my eyes. Repeating a small prayer in my heart, I slowly turn the handle. 
and nothing happened. When I was sure nothing was going to happen, I opened my eyes and... To put it mildly, I was in a bizarre room. I mean, all the rooms we'd seen had been bizarre in their own way. But this was on another level of weird. It wasn't like the other rooms, which were designed to appear terrifying. The terror simply lurked there, Unba unabashed and not for show, but in its true form. Whoa, look at that! Hagakura's whole arm was shaking as he pointed. At the wall lined with monitors, the and the images displayed on those screens were of those were of the inside of the academy, from the dormitory to the classrooms. Just about every place imaginable inside the building was visible on that wall. Th these are feeds from the security cameras? The footage taken by the security cameras installed around the school seems to be transmitted to these monitors. In other words, this room was used to watch over us. To watch us? Then this is... No doubt about it. It's the Puppet Master's room. The Puppet Master's room. He's right. I can't think of anything else it would be it could be. So the Puppet Master watched over us from within this very room. Hmm. It seems we have the answer to our question. W what question? The identity of the corpse in the garden. The fact that she had the key to this room means the body belonged to the Puppet Master, Mukuro Ikusaba. And the Puppet Master's dead? She's really dead? So it would seem. S seriously Such an unfulfilling end, to have died at someone's hands, other than my white knights. The Puppet Master is dead? Is that really true? Is this really the end of everything? I mean, the person in the garden obviously didn't die of natural causes, which means someone... But if the Puppet Master's dead, if we can get out of here, finally we can get out of this place. And now that, and now that that's settled, we need to find a way out, dudes. No. First we investigate this room. Huh? What about a way out? If the Puppet Master's dead, that means we can escape whenever we want. But before we do that, Figuring out what the Puppet Master's objective was in constructing this game comes first. Plus, the fact that the Puppet Master was murdered is also a point of interest. M murdered So you're thinking the same thing too, huh, Togami? Of course I was. You only need half a brain cell and one working eye to figure out that the Puppet Master was undoubtedly... ...murdered. But why? And by who? What I'm saying is, to answer those questions, we have to learn about the Puppet Master and her goals. He's made himself clear, cockroach. Now you're banned from talking back to my white knight ever again! The Puppet Master's objective, and the reason why she was murdered. Togami's definitely right in thinking there might be some clues as to that in this room. The room where the Puppet Master once sat. Let's stop wasting time and get started. Today we uncover the truth behind the Puppet Master. First thing that sticks out is this Monokuma door. It's a creepy looking door with Monokuma painted on it. I wonder what's on the other side. No good. The door won't open? Have you tried to key this room? I'll give it a shot at least. Still no luck. It doesn't fit in the keyhole. Dang. That's no big deal. The Puppet Master's dead, so nothing else is gonna happen. Yeah, you're right. I'm kind of curious as to what's behind this creepy Monokuma door. But curiosity doesn't open locked doors, so there's nothing I can do. Asina's right about what she said. The Puppet Master is gone, so there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. There's something displayed on this TV. Well, look at what we have here, next to the TV. There's an indoor antenna. Yeah, dude, this is the same indoor digital TV antenna my grandma uses. So you're saying that if we plug the antenna in, we'll be able to watch TV? Huh? TV? Here, here comes Miss Potato. Miss Couch Potato. I've never actually been called that before. But if we, we won't watch TV, let's do it. Go on, do it. Well, we all... We, we have been kind of starved for information about the outside world. 
<laughs> Alright, leave it to me. Oh, this baby run that you, faster than you could say... That. I have no idea what that is, nor do I, nor do I intend to try and pronounce it. Alright, so nothing important. So we're gonna have it if I investigate the TV. Hey, hey, is the TV ready yet? Give me just a bit more time, dude. Still have a hurry on site. I have a dozen things I have to I wanna say right now, but whatever Laga whatever it is isn't one of them. Alright, let's look at the desk then. There's an array of computers here. Unlike the laptop bots or egos on, these appear to be fairly powerful machines. They're powered on, but they seem to be locked down. Does that mean can't use them? Can't you, like, f use force or something? What era were you born in? I wonder if the pub master was using these computers to monitor the school's network. And that's how she caught Alter Ego. Most likely. But sparing your focus on things of the past is nothing for us right now. Uh... Yeah. Huh. Alright, well, let's there, investigate. Anywhere and everywhere, we're always being followed by these cameras. Which, how many cameras are there? Kinda weird where there's one in here. It's almost ridiculous how many screens there are on this, there are in this room. The, pu the pub master watched over us using these monitors. If I had something like this... Hmm? I could watch my white knight doing this and doing that as much as I wanted. How much is th the monthly rent? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's wrong? I have good news for Mr. and Ms. Potato Couch. Couch Potato. Potato Couch, what? <laughs> Looks like she's all good, dude. Really? Oh, let's let this turn her on. Do it. Ah, Puppet Master, Puppet Master, you tell us to give up the outside world. Well, you're here watching this all by yourself. Not cool, dude. Not cool. Huh? Huh? That's... Footage from the security camera in this room, isn't it? What? That ain't right. Oy vey, what are you doing? Uh, something's wrong, dude. It's not just something wrong with you. Everything is wrong. Everything about you is wrong. This TV should only be hooked up to the indoor antenna, dude. There's no reason it should be showing the security camera footage. What about changing the channel? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll give it a shot. Hogcard changed the channel several times, but despite that... The image on the screen remained unchanged. It continued to show us, standing in the data processing room. What the heck? Could it be broken? No, but maybe the TV itself is some sort of trick. A trick? What kind of trick? Hi, Monokuma. I can tell you that, but... What? Hmm... Huh? Huh? <gasps> Gah! Long time no see, bitches! Monokuma! Why are you... I... I thought you were... You were supposed to be dead! Gah! Me? Dead? Don't make me laugh, you scumbags! And your personality changed too! Of course, it's been two very long years. It would be weirder if I didn't change. It has been that long, dude. It's only been like 12 hours. Anyway, why are you back on? That, yes, that. Boop, boop, boop. I love it when you guys make that face. I wanted to see the looks on your faces when hope turned into despair. Are you saying you pretended to be dead for that? It's pretty unusual for a bear to play dead, isn't it? Normally it'd be you guys playing dead. Oh, this is amazing. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> On that note, 
It's time you guys started sparing for the future. Throw away your hope-ridden pasts, and revel in this academic coliseum. No way. It's not over? But <laughs> we were gonna get out of here. You want out? You're still saying that? Get it through your thick skulls already. It's not possible to leave the academy. Plus... It's not like life here is all bad. I mean, no matter where you live, bad stuff will always happen. Screw you. There's nothing worse than this. Which is to say, this is despair. Ah! <laughs> Whew, I'm tired of laughing. So let's get down to business. Business? That, t that TV over there? You guys stumbled on something pretty cool. Yes, sir. Without the t without that TV, the story of this academy would end up buried beneath the sands of time. I knew it. There's something more to that television than meets the eye. The only thing plugged in is the indoor antenna. So why is it showing security camera footage? Boop, boop, boop. Wouldn't you just love to know? All right, as a super special service, I'll tell you about that TV. That television is, just as it should be, displaying the signal being received by the antenna. No tricks! Huh? What do you mean? If it's just showing what the antenna receives, then why are we... You're so dim-witted. Figure it out already. Basically, what I'm saying is... Every second of this academic coliseum is being broadcast live nationwide to rave reviews! Huh? Every se- Yes. You can say it as many times as you want. I still won't understand. I know what the words mean, yet I have no idea what it means. What What do you mean, being broadcast live nationwide? Is this some kind of joke? Don't tell me you hijacked the broadcast signals! The security camera footage is being aired on TV? I don't care who you are, dude. That's not possible! The fact that your minds are blown by that just goes to show how little you guys know about the real world. As long as you know a, silly, a trick or two, hijacking some silly TV signals is easy mode. Y you're not joking around? Of course not. Ah. My nerves creaked and groaned and grated together. They made a sharp, unpleasant, and clearly audible sound. There was meaning in everything. At every turn, I grudgingly left you hints to help you tackle this academy's mysteries. I even went so far as to lure you guys into this room. You think I'd do all that without a reason? It was for all it was all for the sake of the audience, following this unparalleled display of live public despair. As the director of Despair Entertainment Productions, it was the least I could do. Our slogan is re real despair entertainment, and this is extreme reality programming if I ever saw it. You're lying. If this place was shown on TV, then the police and the public would have been up in arms. Yeah, dude. There's no way help wouldn't have come by now. Help already has come. Huh? But the, but in the end, that this isn't their problem, is it? Even if someone watching shouted, they're in danger. They wouldn't actually do anything, would they? That's just how people are. Not that I understand or really even care. It would require astronomical funding and equipment to hijack and maintain control of public broadcast waves. You wanna know why we went why I went so far? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well you see. That's still a secret. You guys have your work cut out for you, don't ya? Work cut out for us? Of course I'm talking about that. We got a corpse here! We'll be holding a class trial pretty soon, so make good use of the time you got! Huh? A class trial? That means... <laughs> I'll leave Monokuma File 5 over here for ya! Best of luck! Well, I'd, re I'd better be off. It's gonna get pretty hectic. I'm expecting a ton of fan reaction today from this. I'm so excited! And with that, Monokuma disappeared, leaving behind a nonsensical, incomprehensible truth and despair.
We all remained there, unable to move for some time. Never mind moving. It was difficult to even stay standing. <laughs> I'm totally so freaking lost, dude. All this stuff about public despair, and... Why the heck is he alive? Right when I thought we were finally going to be able to get out of here. And what does he mean? A class trial? It's obvious. A class trial is a class trial. In other words, we have to determine who the culprit is. The culprit who killed Kyoko Kirigiri. What? What are you talking about? Wasn't it supposed to be Mukuro Ikusaba who died? The corpse is a woman, as is Kirigiri. And the fact that Monokuma is up and running again means the puppet master Mukuro Ikusaba is not dead. Therefore, the corpse does not belong to Mukuro Ikusaba, but, b but to Kyoko Kirigiri. I can think of no other explanation. That corpse is Kirigiri's? Kirigiri was murdered? No, that's not true! That can't happen! I still don't know anything about her. I never even got to learn what her talent is. And for it to just end like that... I can't believe that. I refuse to believe it! What you believe doesn't matter one damn bit. The truth is the truth! And if you say you don't believe it, then verify it yourself. Verify it myself. Anyway, let's begin. But, hey, if there's gonna be a class trial, does that mean the culprit? Yes, the culprit is one of the, rem one of the participants in this academic coliseum. Th then one of us, then one of us here off to carry? No, not necessarily. Huh? But you just said... I don't have time to explain myself to you right now. There's a great deal I want to look into. Anyway, I'm getting started. If you value your lives, you all had best do the same. Those are the rules here. I love this new investigation theme, too. Start off, I guess I'll check the Monokuma file. As a result of the damage caused by an explosion, the identity of the deceased is unknown. The explosion occurred at post-mortem. The deceased su suffered a single knife wound to the abdomen, extending to the back of the body. There are signs of visual a vis there are signs of trauma visible on the back of the deceased's head, which appear to have been caused by a strike from a cylindrical object approxim approximately the same diameter as an iron pipe. Additionally, there are numerous wounds visible in multiple locations on the deceased's body. However, these wounds were not incurred in the last few days, but at some earlier time. Figures. Even the Monokuma file won't reveal the identity of the victim, huh? Is that unidentified body actually Kirigiri? Or... I have to find out my for myself. I have to see it with my own eyes. In either case, if the truth doesn't come to light, we'll all be killed. Let's go. To the garden. The scene of the crime! Alright, let's go take a fine tooth comb and to find anything and everything that seems suspicious. I should do the same thing I've been doing up till now. Alright, let's check out everything first. The sprinklers. If I'm mistaken, this is the control panel from the sprinkler system. Sprinklers are set off, set to go off every morning at 7.30 and can't be reprogrammed. Hold on. Wait. Can the sprinklers go off at 7.30 a.m.? If the corpse was here before then, it would naturally be wet. That means the murder took place... Before 7... After 7.30, yes. Now let's look in the chicken coop. It's a chicken coop. There are chickens in it. Four chickens. Wait, four? What's up, Nags? Good time, Hagakure. I've got a question for you. Do you remember how many chickens were in this coop? I most certainly do. Exactly five, dude. Oh, really? Huh? What's wrong? One's missing. There are only four chickens here. What? Ah! That's weird. Wonder when I went missing. When I checked on them yesterday, just before nighttime, all five were there. Oh god, what do we do? Five turning into a four is a colossal problem for the fabric of the universe, dude! It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Even just one piece missing in the universe remains forever incomplete, dude! Ignoring Hagakore. Could the chicken going missing have something to do with this murder? You never know. 
Alright, next up, the shed. It's probably a good idea to reinvestigate the shed, too. It's a dusty mess. Seems like a pretty run-of-the-mill shed. But hold on, there's a white vinyl sheet here? Were there vinyl sheets in the shed before? I might have something to do with the murder, so I could at least check it out. The front side of this vinyl sheet is filthy. Dirt and mud everywhere. It's soaking wet. But the back side... is completely clean. Not even a drop of water. It's kind of peculiar, huh? The, a vinyl sheet, dirty and wet, only on one side. That does it for the things I want to look at in here. Alright, so next, the body. Or... The knife. First. There's a knife on the ground. I'm guessing this knife is the same one that was in the body before the explosion. And the force from the explosion sent it flying. According to the Monokuma file, the knife wound extends from the abdomen all the way to the back. Which means that, that was the cause of death? You know, I feel like I've seen this knife somewhere. Could it be... Yeah! The knife that masked person had. Something smells kind of fishy. There's no way, there's way too many similarities. The masked person who attacked me last night had this knife in their hand. And then that same knife shows up here sticking out of the stomach of someone in the same mask. In which case... <sighs> Could the reason this masked person ended up getting stabbed be because... I stole the knife in the heat of the struggle, and then... I... If we assume the next masked person murdered here is Kirigiri, then that means the person in the mask who attacked me last night was also Kirigiri. But why wear a mask? I have no idea. I don't remember anything about what happened last night. But still, there's no way that could have. Alright, next up, these fragments near the dead body, too. These look like fragments of some sort. They're. They're burnt, so it's hard to say for sure. I'm pretty sure I've seen them somewhere before. But where? Was it there? It's probably, good, it's probably a good idea to go check that out later. A thorough investigation should tell me once and for all whether this is Kirigiri or not. Alright, first off, the hand. Huh? Looks like there's something attached to the corpse's fingernails. These are fake nails. They're fairly long, too. They almost seem like they would get in the way. Plus, on top of the right hand, there's a tattoo. It's hard to tell because of the burns. It must be a, of a dog or something. I don't think I've ever seen a design like that before. Alright. The lab coat the, wear the victim is wearing is completely burnt. Only part of it is left. Okay. The upper half of the body is burnt black from the fire caused by the explosion. Also, only the upper half of the body where it's burnt is wet. When the corpse is on fire, I splashed water on it. So I only threw water onto the burning upper half. It makes sense that the lower half isn't wet. In other words, there's nothing strange about only the upper half being wet. Right? Wet. Threw water on the upper half. That's why the lower half isn't wet. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's what Togami has to say. Perfect timing, Nagi. I have a question for you. A question for me? About your alibi. M my alibi? Give me your alibi for last night after 10 p.m. Uh, uh, I wasn't feeling very well, so I was asleep. What do you need my alibi for all of a sudden? 
and, af and for after nighttime began, alas. Isn't it obvious? The murder could not have occurred before 10 p.m. last night. And how do you know that? I came to this garden just after the nighttime announcement ran last night. As part of my search for the others, so I could inform them about Monokuma is being disabled. I came here to find Hagakore because he's spent considerable time in the garden these past few days. I can say for certain that there was no corpse here at that time. Which is to say the murder occurred sometime after that. Sometime after nighttime began, when I paid a visit to this garden. However, Hagakore, Fukawa, Asahina, and I were all in the gym together until morning. Huh? After, the, after meeting up with Hagakore in the garden, we immediately went to the two girls' rooms. After that, the four of us went to the gym and began work on disassembling Monokuma. As a precaution, we avoided, individually act in we avoided individual activity during that time. We went to the restroom in pairs. In short, the four of us have perfect alibis. On the other hand, the only ones without alibis are me and Kirigiri. And assuming this corpse belongs to Kirigiri, the only one without an alibi is me! On top of that, when we went to Fukawa's and Asahina's rooms, we also went to your bedroom. But there was no response. Now where exactly were you? I was in my room, honest. I was just asleep, because I wasn't feeling well. With no one to confirm your cl what you claim, that, that doesn't qualify as an alibi. Yeah, I know. So what's your next move? The board is not laid out in your favor. This is kind of bad, isn't it? For me to be the only one without an alibi. Alright. Wait, say Hina? Hey Nagi, do you remember what the corpse looked like before it blew up? Um, I'm pretty sure... Their face was covered by a mask, and their body was covered by a lab coat. It was nice to get out of their stomach, and their clothes around that area were covered in blood. They apparently stopped bleeding, but the blood still hadn't dried. Tsukami said that if we touched it, we were likely to get our hands stained. Although, for how much blood there was, there was no sign of any on the ground or around the body. Thanks for helping me remember, Nagi. You are really a big help! By explaining it to you, Asahina, I was also able to remember what things were like before the explosion. So thank you, too. Toko. And after all this, we still know who the body is. But whoever it is, I won't look. I won't black out again. Okay. It's 11 o'clock right now, dude. And? I was trying to remember what time I discovered the body. The time I discovered the body, huh? Well, I'm picking over my memories of the day, trying to remember what time we found the body. I woke up at 7 o'clock to, to hear Monokuma's announcement. I went to the cafeteria soon after. I met up with Asahina, that was probably around 7.30. Then after that, I went to the gym, where everyone else was, and we moved to the headmaster's office. Fukawa went to go get the pickaxe. Found the body then. That time it was... 9 o'clock. Oh yeah, it was around 9. Huh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. The corpse was discovered at 9 o'clock. Sounds good to me. My work here is done. How does it work? It's not a whole lot of that, huh? Anyway, I think I've seen everything I want to investigate here. But it's still not over. There's still other places that need to be investigated. I need to go there. Figure out the source of those fragments I found. And collect as much information about Kirigiri as I possibly can. Is that corpse really Kirigiri's? And if so... Was it, was it Kirigiri who attacked me last night? I'll probably be able to answer those questions by finding out more about Kirigiri. She hardly ever spoke about herself. But if I go to her bedroom, I should be able to find something out. Have the key to her room. Yes, Togami has it. I gotta ask for his help. And see if he'll lend me the key to Kirigiri's room. Alright, so let's do that first. Hey, Togami. If you're here to make excuses about your alibi, save them for the class trial. No, it's not that. You have the key to Kirigiri's room, don't you? I was wondering if I could borrow it. You're a suspect. I can't give you the key. But I could escort you to her room. You do that? I have things I want to investigate first. Ask me again later. Depending on how I feel, then, I'll probably bring you to her room. Later, huh? I, guess I, sh I suppose I should spend some time investigating other areas. Particularly that other area. And since the game's being so damn fucking vague about it, yeah, you have to go to the gym. 
<laughs> Alright. Monokuma's must assemble pieces are scattered all over the gymnasium floor, except as I thought, it's not here. Yeah, the bomb's gone. That bomb has gone missing. There's no doubt about it. The fragments in the garden were... Okay, so I figured out what was bugging me. Next is Kirigiri's bedroom. She went to the garden and asked Togami about that again. Alright. <laughs> Alright, Togami. Hey, Togami, you about ready? Kirigiri's room? Let's go. Hey, wait, Togami! Aaron's catch up to Togami, and we both hurry to the dormitory. Ah. I do believe her... Yeah, her room's the first one over here. I'm opening the door now. Togami so removed Kirigiri's key from his pocket and inserted it into the, her door. There. Ah, thanks. So this is so this is Kirigiri's room, huh? What exactly is it you were hoping to find by investigating this room? I didn't have anything specific in mind, I just thought there might be something useful. Something that might help me understand Kirigiri better. Don't tell me that's the only reason you dragged me along on this little trip. S sorry. There's not enough time in the world to produce useful results when you don't even have an objective. Don't you have anything more concrete? Anything at all that tells you what, what it is that needs doing? Something more concrete. Ah, now that you mention it. Alright. I'm pretty sure I put it in my pocket. There it is. What's that envelope? Kirigiri gave it to me. She said oh, to open it should something happen to her. Then open it. Something has indeed happened to her. Okay. I left the envelope flap and carefully removed its contents. There's a single sheet of scrap paper. Under the sheets? Was there nothing else in the envelope? Nope, that's it. Under the sheets? She mean there's something there? Is there something hidden beneath the bed sheets? Only half expecting to find anything, I lifted the sheets up and... W what's this? I found a single sheet, crumpled sheet of paper. Kibogamine Academy's 78th class. Student register? Mukuro Ikusaba? That looks to be Mukuro Ikusaba's student profile. So it does. I'm guessing Kirigiri stole this along with the key when she snuck into the headmaster's office. The blankety blankety blank Monokuma mentioned. Has to be this. This is what Kirigiri left behind, so her death wouldn't be in vain. This isn't the time to be getting emotional. Hurry up and read it. Uh, alright. I collected myself and looked down at- looked back down at Mukuro Kusaba's profile. Name, Mukuro Ikusaba. Sex, female. Title, Super Duper High School Mercenary. Mukuro Ikusaba's slender build, belly is her, her, com, her as a combat specialist. Uh, Belai, wow, I'm stupid. Belai is her as a combat specialist. Highly skilled in a wide, ra in wi in a wide range of weaponry. Fostering an intense interest in, military fr in the military from a young age, it eventually became her whole world. While in elementary school, Mukuro Ikusaba took the championship in an international airsoft tournament, gathering, gaining recognition and making her the subject of articles in numerous modern military publications. However, just before she entered middle school, Mukuro Ikusaba went missing during a family trip to Europe. The investigation into her disappearance, which has been treated as a kidnapping, made little progress, and drew considerable media attention. In the end, she was never found. Three years later, however, Mukuro Ikusaba suddenly returned to Japan, alone. She confessed to having spent the previous three, three years enlisted as a member of the Fenrir Mercenary Corps. She said that she had not been kidnapped, but that she left of her own volition to be trained as a mercenary. Despite that, despite that, 
It still remains unclear as to why she suddenly decides to return to Japan. Mercenaries this, warfare that. It's like she's from another dimension, not just the world she lives in or how she was raised. There's only fiction and non-fiction. There's no point even trying to compare them. That's how far apart our dimensions are. That was the impression I had as an ordinary everyday citizen, but... I never thought I'd hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You've heard of them? The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a deranged organization of warriors for hire. Although they do offer some rather useful services, it wouldn't hurt you hurt for you to remember their name. No, I think I'm good. This is all obviously way out of my league. However, there is something that's bug bugging me. I recall hearing rumors that Fenrir had already... I spy with my little eye a sub-character-esque protagonist and a protagonist-esque protagonist sub-character. Monokuma! Well now, what do you guys have there? Ay ay ay! You saw the profile! And what are you going to do about it? You don't need to act like you got a snake in your boots. I don't have any intention of condemning you guys. Nor am I going to get all over cowardly Kirigiri's case for stealing it either. To be quite honest, thievery isn't against the rules. But I can't forgive Ogami, who broke the school lo broke the school rules by destroying the headmaster's office's lock. Maybe I should drag out her body, hack it up, and eat it. Bears are omnivorous, after all. You must be pretty particular about the rules if you consider the a violation unforgivable. You got that right. The school rules are the grease that keeps this academy running smoothly. And so, as the headmaster, it's my obligation to uphold the rules. You uphold the rules, huh? Does that mean they apply to you too? Yes, sir. I don't want to deal with you guys getting in your panties and getting your panties in a bunch about things being unfair. And while we're talking about particulars, I've got some juicy information for you guys. Information? It's about who the rules apply to. To put it another way. It's about the participants in this academic coliseum. Up till now, I don't think I've told you exactly how many participants there are. So I think it's about time I cleared things up. When you when you guys gathered in the entrance hall, there are only 15 of you here, right? So I'm guessing that caused a pretty big misunderstanding for you guys. B by misunderstanding, do you mean... Yep, there aren't 15. But a total of 16 high school students participating in the academic coliseum. Sixteen. Then... Kyoko was right. The sixteenth high school student. The sixteenth student, Mukuro Ikusaba, is also a participant. Which means the rules also apply to her. Why? Yes, did you say something? Why would you go out of your way to tell us that specifically? Ah, well, you see... As I said before, the Academic Coliseum is being broadcast live to despairingly rave views. With so many people watching, it's necessary to be completely transparent about the rules. I mean, it'd be a pain if I had to deal with a storm of complaints and hate mail later, wouldn't it? So that's why I told ya. Well, that's all the hints you're getting from me. But as retribution, I will tell you one other thing. Retribution? Tit for tat. Cowardly Kirigiri's tit for a Monokuma tat. Mukuro Ikusaba's profile for Kirigiri's profile. K Kirigiri's profile? You know how she wears those obnoxious gloves day in and day out? Just between you and me, she wears them. To hide markings on both of her hands that she doesn't want people to see. What? Oop poop poo. That's all you're getting from me. See you guys again at the class trial. Da ha 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 Monokuma's testimony. Markings on both of her hands that Kirigiri doesn't want people to see. Could he possibly be talking about... That tattoo? But, wait. Monokuma said it was something she didn't want people to see. Which is to say why she wears gloves to hide her hands. But that's the case. What about those fake nails? Are you thinking about Kirigiri again? Huh? Now it's not the time for that. First we need to carefully consider Monokuma's trap. Monokuma's... trap? Your feeble-mindedness can only be punishment from God. Think carefully about what Monokuma just said. There are 16 students here in the academy. In other words, Mukuro Ikusaba counts as a student. To make it an even, even easier for you, Monokuma is trying to say that the school rules apply to Mukuro Ikusaba. 
the question is, why would Monokuma come out and say that at this particular time? He said it was there so there wouldn't be any complaints afterwards about the rules not being clear. Uh, 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 I did a uh, Makoto did a Togami impression. Deal with it. Yeah. Turning that around, it means Mukuro Yusaba is connected to this case. And because of that, in the interest of fairness, Monokuma revealed the existence of the 16th student in, in advance of the class trial. Mukuro Yukusaba is involved in the case? It's possible Mukuro Yukusaba is the culprit in Kyoko Kirogiri's murder. What? If you assume Mukuro Yukusaba is the culprit, it makes sense that a class trial would be held, because that means the murder was, without a question, committed among the students. The culprit is Mukuro Yukusaba? She killed Kirigiri? Of course, anyone without a working brain could figure that much out. In fact, that's what I believed to be the case when Monokuma announced the trial. But what Monokuma said just made me change my mind. Mukuro Ukusaba is not the culprit! Huh? Why not? Mukuro Ukusaba, the super duper high school despair, is possibly the puppet master's true identity. Given that, doesn't it strike you as odd? Why would the puppet master go out of her way to reveal information disadvantageous to her? Now that you mention it, that makes sense. On the other hand, her saying things to intentionally make Mukuro Ukusaba look suspicious means exactly the opposite, that she is not the culprit. Which is why you said it was a trap. A trap designed to make us draw an incorrect conclusion. That's one possible interpretation. The more I think about it, the more likely it seems. But then, if the 16th student Mukuro Ukusaba isn't the culprit, who is? Alright, let's see what this is. There's something on top of the table. A wooden plate? What's that used for? I think it's probably a key. You know, like the keys used to the lockers at a public bath? Looks like one of those. Hell if I know. I've never been to a public bath. That sounds about right. So Ami probably can't even envision what a public bath would look like. So it's a key, huh? That reminds me, I've, I might have seen something like that somewhere. Oh, where? As I recall, yes, in the dojo. I recall seeing something similar to this there. Ah, right, the dojo. It would seem as though we've completed our business here in this room. Let's get going to our next location. The dojo, right? The dojo, right. We need to figure out what this wooden key opens. Let's go. Alright. It's gonna open these lockers, obviously. What the hell? Okay. A row of wooden lockers is lined up against the wall. The key's here. I like what you find in a public bath. So the key we found in Cured Gears room really did come from these lockers. Now, you look at this locker on the right. It's the only one without a key in it. You know what that means, don't you? It means I need to put the key we found in Cured Gears room into that slot. Get to it! Okay. I took the wooden plate out of my pocket and inserted it in the slot in the locker. The key slid into the slot as though it were being sucked in, and then I opened the locker. There are four there are arrows inside, around ten in total, maybe. They're dual lumen. They may be thin, but they're extremely sturdy. Without a bow, they're nothing but thin, sturdy rods. Thin, sturdy rods. Aside from that... There's a ball of brown packing tape crumpled up at the bottom of the locker with what appears to be blood on it. The fact that there's blood means this is probably connected to the murder. I'm inclined to agree that it is connected. But as for how, I'm drawing a blank right now. I think that's about all there is of interest in the locker. What's wrong, Togami? Doesn't it strike you as odd? Something obviously connected to the murder was being stored in this locker. Why is that key to the locker in the victim's, Kirigiri's bedroom? Wait, what if... Togami? Never mind. Anyway, there's not much time. Let's move. Huh? Where to? We have research to do. On Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group Mukurugasaba was in? But how are we going to do that? Where does one go to do research? Do I really need to spell this out for you? Where would you go to do research? You mean the archives in the library? Oh yeah, that's right. There are even files on thing 
their own things that aren't public knowledge. We don't have much time without the class trial. Let's go. The files on Fenrir are on that shelf, I think. Togami headed straight for the back, straight for the shelf at the back, as though he knew exactly what he was looking for. He there it is. Here. Then he returned to where I was standing, carrying a single file. Oh, right. Here, look. Look, but I can't read it. What language is this in? You're not saying you made it to high school without learning French, are you? I'm pretty sure the majority of high school students can't read French, actually. You're hopeless. Fine, I'll read it for you. Just let- just know that you'll be pay repaying this debt a hundredfold. A hundredfold? Extorniate? Extortionate? Much? What? Okay. Fenrir is an organization of professional soldiers operating out in the middle- out of the Middle East. Unlike typical private military companies, Fenrir is a brutally violent outfit specializing in direct combat. It is said that a single member of Fenrir has the military strength of 100 ordinary soldiers. To the Fenrir legend, the Wolf of Ragnarok, they inspire fear in, ev in everyone they meet in battle. While it's not public knowledge, they apparently took a part in a great many battles in military operations. However, some time ago, they suddenly ceased all activity. It is presently unknown whether the organization even still exists. Some reports suggest all of the high-ranking members were murdered, but no one else has been able to confirm it. Another rumor says Fenrir ex was exterminated to prevent them from leaking highly classified military secrets, and some believe they destroyed themselves in some sort of internal conflict. What? I feel like... how should I put it? I'm gazing into another world. We're all part of the same world. They just live in next door. Besides, this, the battlefield and this academy. They're actually so different. Both worlds thrive on the unimaginable and the unpredictable. And that is why this place is so much fun. I couldn't disagree with you more. Anyway, is there any th anything else you're curious about? This is your last chance to learn about Fenrir. Oh yeah, there was something. Something I want to know. Earlier you mentioned the legend of Fenrir, right? Fenrir, the, le the legendary wolf of, wolf of Ragnarok. Son of Loki in North Norse mythology. While we're on the subject, I'll tell you one other thing. To show that they were members of Fenrir, every soldier was apparently required to inscribe the symbol of Fenrir somewhere on their bodies. What? A symbol representing Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok. Wait, then... Could that be... <laughs> Looks like it's class trial time. Gradual as it may be, time constantly erodes away at every living thing, material and phenomenon. Little by little, damage is being inflicted upon each of us, and we need to be more mindful of it. So that, to, so to that end, time's up. Time for the class trial. Anyway, you guys, get your rears in gear and meet at the usual place. Oop, poo poo poo. See you in a bit. It seems our time is up. Everything else we'll need to figure out during the class trial. Indeed. Let's go. Okay. Yo, Nags and Tugs are here. They're together, dude. And where'd you guys get off to? You just suddenly, you just all of a sudden vanished, never came back. Don't ask stupid questions. We were investigating. What else? My white knight was out investigating alone with the likes of Makoto Naigi. Are you jealous? I don't even want to imagine what she's fantasizing about right now. Cut the chit chat and brace yourselves. He should be here any minute. Any minute now. He'll be here. I sensed it without realizing it, imagining what would happen after this. However. Bizarrely, even after five minutes. Ten minutes. What is the meaning of this? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Maybe he broke down again? What should we do? Wait a little longer, or... Or what? Whoa, suddenly Monokuma! Yo, I scared ya! Explain yourself, where do you get off on making me wait? Me? Making you guys wait? Don't you have that wrong, it's you guys making me wait! Huh? I was just waiting for you guys to all show up! 
We can't start if everyone's not here now. How can we? What are you talking about? We're all already here. Poo poo poo. But you're not. But it's been ten minutes. I'm tired of waiting. I'll just say the no-show is in violation of the rules. Now that's been settled. I've just got to repair the punishment. We heard that voice. Everyone turned back together. I'm here, aren't I? Kirigiri! Kirigiri, you're alive! No, that's a ghost, dude! <laughs> you just stand in the corner over there. Yeah, yeah, save for the class trial. Wouldn't want to spoil all the fun before it got started. Is there no penalty for being late? I'm here, aren't I? The rules don't say anything about tardiness. Isn't that right? You're just a coward, Kirigiri. You're nothing but a coward. Indeed, there's no penalty for being late, but I'm sure you'll regret it later. I'll make you regret it. Anyways, you guys get your asses on the elevator. I'll run on ahead. No, oh, Monokuma disappeared. We all surrounded Kirigiri. Kirigiri! You're not dead. Of course not. Hooray, I'm so glad you're alive. Her being alive isn't necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? He's right, dude. That's a ghost. I said stand in the corner, you. Let me, let's get moving. We can continue this conversation during the class trial. Diving over, looking over at Kirigiri, Togami boarded the elevator. Oh, wait for me, my white knight. Yeah, we better hurry. Hermonokuma might start dishing out punishments for real this time. We can be happy after we've made it past this class trial. And so, one by one, the rest of the crew got onto the elevator. But for me, there's one thing I absolutely had to ask Kirigiri before the class trial. Kirigiri, before the trial, there's one thing I'd like you to tell me. Where have you been? You used that key and snuck in somewhere, didn't you? The second floor of the dormitory. I was doing some investigating there. The second floor of the dormitory? There are no security cameras or TVs there, so I was able to get by without Monokuma noticing. But because of that, I also wasn't able to hear Monokuma's announcements. I had absolutely no idea that a corpse had been found here. When did you find out? Just as I was running to the first floor, I heard the class trial announcement. After that, I did a quick survey of the crime scene. I couldn't come into the class trial knowing nothing. So that's why you're late. Sorry for making you wait. So if you were able to access the second floor of the dormitory, that means you had the op you had you had opened the shutters to the second floor. Not exactly. To be more specific, I can unlock every lock in the it can unlock every lock in the academy. I suppose you can call it Monokuma's secret gadget. What? Hey, what are you two doing? If you don't hurry, Monokuma's gonna get mad. Nike, I'll tell you the rest after we make it through this class trial. Okay? Right now I want to focus on overcoming what's right in front of me. More than likely, this trial is going to be cons is going to be a considerable turning point for me. For me? Something bugs me about her wording. It sounds like she's saying this class trial is going to be a big obstacle for her in particular. Well, we should get going. Without even giving me time to express my concern, Kirigiri walked off toward the elevator. I'm just overthinking things. Right? Alright. I was the last one to board the elevator. When I stepped on... The door closed behind me. My fear and uncertainty grew with the harsh mechanical rumble of the elevator. I knew I'd never get used to the pressure, feeling like a death row inmate waiting for the inevitable. Nobody spoke to cut through the gloomy darkness. We just stood, staring in silence. And, after a short while, a bright light did what our words would not, shattering the darkness. The light burned itself into my eyes, but it wasn't the light of hope. It was the light of despair. I've been waiting for this moment. It's been so long since we've all been together like this. It's been three days. We don't need silly jokes or long drawn out introductions anymore. Let's just get this party started. And so for the fifth time, the curtain rose on. A trial for life, a judgment of death. Deception in life and treachery in death. Betrayal for life and betrayal for death. The rules of life and the mystery of death. Justification for life and rationalization of death. Faith in life and trust in death. The class trial to live or the class trial to die. I think it's the first time I've ever done that flawlessly. But anyway, I'm going to call an episode here. I will see you guys next time for some more Let's Play Danganronpa. When we start class trial number five. See you guys then. Late. Thank <laughs> you.